Hello fellow leggers, we're not at the theatre yet. We're not at the theatre yet, and we are the breaker leggers, but we're soon to be joined by the little leggers. And then heading off, well, we're whisking them away to the Windy City tonight, and by that I mean Wolverhampton. Yay! To see the touring production of the Windy City Musical, Chicago! Chicago. So stick around to hear all of our thoughts and the little leggers thoughts. Yeah, find out how many stars. And whether it's break a leg or leg, leg it. it. Nice to be in the warm for this yeah. opening because usually we are. It's getting cold and it dark, fellow colder. leggers. But I think from we may be outside. It's only because we've got the little leggers. But when they join us, at least we're, we're in the warm now. So what do we need to know about Chicago? Well, it's the legendary Candor and Ebb musical, which premiered on Broadway in 1975, and it's based on a 1926 play of the same name. Now that play was by a reporter, Maureen Dallas, and it was about actual criminals and the crimes on which she reported on in Chicago itself. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, so it's sort of semi-autobiographical and sort of smacks of real people and real crimes. Now right. this itself was the era of jazz music, gin joints and scandal. Um, but despite that sort of great sounding premise and despite the original production boasting a cast including Gwen Verdon mm. and Cheetah Rivera and what? Jerry Orbach oh my goodness. alongside iconic choreography by Bob Fosse, which has now become synonymous with the show. You know, yeah. you think Fosse, you think Chicago, you think jazz hands. It's all mm -hmm. the same thing. Yep. The original production wasn't a runaway success. It was only following a paired back 1996 Broadway revival directed by Walter Bobby that the show reached the astronomical heights that the revival has gone on to become. And it's now the second longest Broadway musical of all time. What? Just behind Phantom of the Opera. Oh my goodness. And it's the longest running American written Broadway musical of all time, full stop. Gosh. And it's mounted sister productions of that paired back 96 revival worldwide, including this tour, which okay. is based on that revival. Yes, which is like this picture frame with the orchestra on stage yes. and the sports space. Okay, and Very sleek, sleek costumes. minimal yeah. is what I would say. So what it okay. hangs on is a sensational cast. So luckily enough, we have some great names in this cast, including Ooh. the gorgeous Faye Brooks in the role of Rox Roxy, who's best known for her role as Kate Connor in ITV's Coronation Street. Right. But she's out tonight, oh. so we're getting her understudy. More about that later. Okay. Velma Kelly is being played by Jalenga Scott, who we last saw playing Bomb Ballerina in Cats at Kilworth oh, House. Wow. Great and we talent. pulled her out as a, as a great talent mm. at the time. Darren Day, icon of stage nowadays. Gosh, he, he is. I he's saw him at the Grand tour. in Hello Dolly. I think he's done it all, hasn't he? Ago, he's probably. found his home in musical theatre yes. productions. He's like. playing Billy Flynn. Okay. The icon and gay legend herself, Sunita, in the role of Mama Morton. Ooh. I'm sure she'll be so macho in that part. See what I did there. Friend of the Leggers, Joel Montague uh, as Amos. We love Joel. We love Joel. And the supremely talented triple threat, Dean at Davina De Campo. Um, it, uh, obviously runner-up of the first season of UK Drag Race. Yep. Um, done a bunch of TV work. He's Very playing talented. Mary Sunshine. Now, it does have an age rating recommendation of 13 plus. Okay, so the little leggers are just sneaking in there. Just sneaking in there. And it's around 2 hours and 15 minutes, including a 20 minute interval. What I like most about Chicago, I've seen this production before and I've got to say, never been a big fan. Same Although here. it did have a 2002 movie adaptation starring which Richard Gere, a big fan of. Yep, um, Rene Zellweger and Catherine Zeta-Jones, which was a box office smash, 45 million budget, 307 million return and it's widely considered responsible for ushering in the re-emergence of the musical theatre, musical film genre in the 21st century. It's a big accolade for the it? film. And uh, I've seen it as well. I saw it at the, what would it have been on? Was it the Vaudeville Theatre in London? It was on, no, no it wasn't the Vaudeville. it was the Phoenix it was Phoenix. on Phoenix. Um, and oh, and was sure, it on? No, I think I saw it, it somewhere else. It transferred to the Phoenix. Yes, I think it was the Vaudeville. Wherever okay. Waitress is on, I remember it being there for a long a Delphi. time. Adelphi. Adelphi, I think that's where it was. And I saw it there. I have also saw the touring production in Leicester a few years ago. And I thought there were some good standout numbers, but I've been underwhelmed. Yeah, it's left me cold before, but you know Great what? Great but I'm, I'm always happy open. to see it through new eyes. And I'm classic. happy to see it through brand new eyes with the little leggers who've got no experience of the show at all. Don't even know many of the songs. So stick around 
around to catch up with them and us in the 30 second interval breakdown. And to the end to hear all of our thoughts on how many stars. Fellow Leggers, we have come to the interval, which means it's time for the breaker Leggers. And the little Leggers. 30 second interval breakdown. Oh, who's going first? I really like the feathers in the All I Care About Is Love number. Brilliant. Yes, yes. Big Lego. I like Roxy's outfit when they're doing the press scene. I think that one's really good. Okay. Big Lego. I like the sort of, I just like the talent by and large. I like how active they are. I like the fact they're all on stage. I like the bare minimalness. I like the audience. How about you? Um, I think it's a lot of style over substance. It's very smooth. It's very suave. It looks great. The bodies, the physiques. But in terms of substance, I'm, I'm lacking a lot. Fellow Leggers, we've come to the end of Chicago on tour. Chicago. Chicago, Chicago. here at the uh, Grand Theatre Wolverhampton. Do you have a pun? Did we check? Do I have a pun? Yeah. Um, Is it Chicago no. or just go? There you no. go. Do you know <laughs> what? Vote this is that. What happens I want to know you what don't... you think of that when you come up with the punnage. Is <laughs> this that is better than I my don't. punnage? That's what we know. Is it Chicago or, or just... just... Go. go. <laughs> okay, needs go. to really work. I think we'll stick with that. Uh, yes, I've seen this piece before, as I mentioned. I think this is my third time now. Um, and I still prefer the film. Okay, why is that, Lego Simon? What do you think? I just think it adds a lot more narrative. I think that what this piece is a vaudeville cabaret show, really. It is these individual set pieces telling bits of story for different characters from their perspectives, with their motivations. I love its overall commentary on the American justice system, on the fact that America, this is what Kanda and Ebb do so well. It smacks of cabaret in that sense, of sort of exposing uh, sort of a, a world of underneath you know you think the american justice system in sound in god we trust but it just goes to show in the states you can trust no one and similar actually in terms of what i've said from the interval it's all style and not much substance i think something like cabaret it deals with those messages in a much more direct way whereas this is really diluted undertones of the justice system and how fallible it is and also celebrity status how people want to easy become come something. easy go easy come easy go disposable celebrity and we're still in the age of that now remember this is based yeah. on a play from 19 the late 1920s about the 1920s which was converted into a musical in the 70s but so much of its content is still relevant you know the 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 age of celebrity is still with us right now in that you're hot one minute you're not the next nothing has changed and i think it's slightly ironic that they sing um, in 50 years or, or so it's going to change you know but ain't it heaven nowadays it ain't heaven it ain't and it heaven. never has been and as such I, I think it, it just falls short for me um, um, I think with the right people in the right roles this each line each individual moment you really got drives, to remember where got this to have came that from with right? big names Bob, Bob Fosse, Fosse was in a relationship crew. with Gwen Verdon at the time and with Gwen this, the delivering this choreography that sharpness that, that sharp like yeah. I, I, it would have been Magical. Gwen Verdon, We've got Cheetah, the production. Cheetah Rivera, Jerry Orbach. You know. um, that's kind of what I was missing, I yeah. think. So as we we got talent, but we missed that star drive. Yeah. But hey, that's just about that's that's big leggers. Yeah, what about but we're not the, the only ones. Little, here, yeah? not so little leggers. Yeah. <laughs> Who's going first? What do you think? Go on. You I'll said you first. know what you. Go on then. What do you think? I like the fact that at all times you can see the band in the back, so you can always see that they were playing and what they were playing. And I also liked Amos. He was my favourite character just because, like, he, he was just the best. He was <laughs> Amos. Just the best. What was it you liked um, about him particularly? Why was he the best? Like, what, what was it John about him? playing Amos, yes. Yeah. He stole all the comedy moments to start yeah. with. He does get all the comedy Mr. moments. Cellophane that, sway. Mr. Cellophane Mr. sway. Mr. Cellophane sway. I mean, and it, the thing is, it comes down to timing about that. And Joel is a master at timing. You can see, I can see he's, um, who's the character who played in Waitress? You know, the, I'm not I know who you mean. Yes, I know who you mean, but I don't know the name. I don't, I don't know. Ogie. Ogie. He, he has that. He, he's yeah, Ogie. Absolutely. He's got the Ogie comic timing. Joel is perfect for parts like this. There is a part in every show where Joel Montague can fit. Um, talking of the band on stage, I've got to say, um, great, fantastic talent, and yeah, they are so switching talented. out. Um, 
instruments as well. So what do you, you know what? That one in so the middle, many there is brass. three brass at the back. And yeah. to be fair, I've never seen somebody be able to blow so well. Picking <laughs> out, seriously, one instrument after another. Blow, 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 blow. However, it did stand out because we could see them all, how they were all white men. And yes. in terms of diversity, I was a bit like, oh, that's a bit odd. That That's the first time I've noticed. And we've seen it more come through diversity in an orchestra, but not here. Not, not here, in the conductor, yeah. not in any of them. All talented, all great sound, nothing against them. But as we're white. looking at them, I was thinking, ah, that's yeah, something, that is something that's a bit behind maybe with the whole system of music and whoever does arranging. But that's something that did stand out. How about you, uh, Lega Lincoln? I would mention about the costumes, but there really isn't much to mention about <laughs> There is. Is that because they're what so do skimpy? Mean? Do you mean there's not much to mention because yeah. literally it's there. all just crotches and, bro and boobs, right? There's, there's lots but of But there's skin some lovely finish. lace work in some there of the is. costumes. Such as, for example, in the interval I mentioned um, Roxy's um, outfit in her press scene. That was mm -hmm. really nice and the lace work and that was really nice. Mm, yeah. However, the one that I think they could have done more with was Oh, the, the sunshine. sunshine one. The, the sunshine one. Yeah, Mary Sunshine's Which, costume. It was shapeless. Um, yes, that's it. it. And we know fun. Davina has a great figure. Yeah. But we didn't get it to see it. It could have just it. been a big puffy coat. Even that has a figure and that could have looked really nice. Yeah. Cinch your waist, love. That's what we need. We need a cinched yeah. waistline. Yes, absolutely. Um, what did you think of Davina as Mary Sunshine? I thought she was good. Yeah. Lovely notes. They we are know, great. We, we and know Davina can sing yeah, this show. Yeah, that's the thing. Davina, Davina, Davina has, has whistle register. She can absolutely. get up there soprano high and, and has great range and ability. And I'm glad that um, if anything came out of season one, Drag Race, it's that Davina has found her rightful place on stage. Should we talk about Sunita? Let's talk about Sunita. Because I know you're a fan of Sunita. It's a pleasure to Who see isn't? a legend on stage. She's a gay icon. She's an icon as well. She's an icon and a gay icon. But she's a gay icon. Let's like... get physical. No, that's Olivia Newton-John, love. That's Olivia Newton-John, love. <laughs> it's so <laughs> macho. You're so you. macho. And it was something like that. Physical, You're still in macho. training on your gayness. Yeah, so, and it was great to see her on stage. Yeah. Lovely vocals. She gets a couple of really nice numbers, especially the one in the second act stood out to me with Velma Kelly, I that, think it was. That was, that was yes, a really nice... Again, that was like the writing of Candoreb. Just suddenly... I think, I think a lot of the songs were very good. That one was very good. Do you know they had to yeah. change the lyrics for class and during previews because few people refused to sing them because they were so rude? Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Did you Way know? back in Chicago when it first started Yeah, out. in the 70s. Not just in the previews a few weeks no. ago for this there talk. were some rhymes which aren't in it even now wow. because they were just too wow. risque. Well, there you go. Yeah. Um, Darren Day. Um, Darren Day's accent, American accent is phenomenal. I thought it was very smooth, actually. Yeah, I had so my own reservations, smooth. but I thought, okay, yeah, you, you're carrying this well. You, you know, he suits it. He's a bit of a, a grey fox. Is that what they call it? Silver fox? Are you all right, love? I don't know what they call them. Is that what a they call them? A silver fox, yeah. yeah. A Philip Schofield. He, feel, he kind of fits that, because he took over as well from um, Philip Schofield doing Joseph. I'm there sure he was in there. And, and I, but I think Darren went grey first, right? Because Philip tried to hide it for a long, long time. Um, <laughs> Anybody else you want to talk about? Let's talk about Jalenga Scott, who we lost her in Cats at Kilworth House, play, playing Bomb Ballerina. Um, oh. uh, Jalenga is a fantastic mover. She's got legs that go on for days. What she can't can't do with them is not worth talking about. Fantastic figure. I thought she also had the lovely rooted kind of alto mezzoy voice as well when she got down there in the register. It was really nice to listen to and a real raspy tone. We must so mention, um, because we didn't have Faye tonight in the role of um, Roxy, we had Miss Billy Hardy instead. And how difficult must it be to step into a role that is so exposed? Rosie is the centre of it. the show. Yeah, that's like it's so much to learn and no, and there's a whole sequence um, pre the interval where she is on her own mm. as well. There's so much in there to be it's able exposed. to carry that moment. If you haven't had that whole rehearsal process as well, that's, you know, watching somebody else and having to learn it through them, um, I thought it would be very good, very good. Very good. Um, let's also talk about, um, do, 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 do. let's talk about love. The ensemble was very good as oh, a whole. Let's talk oh, okay. about the ensemble, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
But I mean, what carries the show, and this is what Chicago is known for, is an ensemble of dancers. It's a dance piece at its heart. Yeah. It's become synonymous with Bob Fosse's style. You think Fosse, you think Chicago. And how did they interpret those sharp, angular what movements for you tonight? What did you think I of the dancers? I thought it was good. The ensemble was good. Yeah. It was very it was good. good. I, I like the, the feathers. The feathers, the yeah, the Billy Loves Flynn the feathers. feathers. All is Would you like one of those fans, just so you can pop yeah. out from behind it, like? Yes, the feather work was like, yeah, I think that's the best great. thing, actually, is probably the choreography and the ensemble bringing life to that. As you said, there's not much costume going on, and all we're seeing is these fantastic, what it does show is the lines and the physique of the choreography. It just looks so sharp and beautifully um, executed. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't until Always. Anne, Anne Ryan King was involved in the very original, was Bob Fosse's muse in many ways, was involved in the original conception of the show, but actually fully choreographed the 1996 revival. Oh, wow. um, and, and then it became Anne's piece, really. It was Anne Ryan King in the style of Bob Fosse. And we must just take a moment to say um, Anne passed away last year. Mm -hmm. And it's great that her legacy and her inspiration Absolutely. and the part she played in Bob's life lives on. Um, watch Fosse Verdon if you want more. Oh, yes, a very good piece. Lots yeah. of history in there. There is. Very interesting. Um, but yeah, you are right. Do you know what? There's no, the narrative is lacking and it makes up for it in the film. The film is a different beast and adds a lot more depth to the story for me. And that is where it's, it's a nice piece with some good numbers individually staged, but it goes on. It does. Like me. Um, I can about see going you trying on. to wrap me up. Shall we wrap it up? I guess you're probably wondering how many stars we're going to give this touring production of Chicago, which is currently here at the Grand Theatre and maybe coming to a theatre near you yes, for we, this piece. We are going to give... Three. Three stars for this piece. It's a good night out, but it's not the film. It has holes in it in terms of narrative, and it always has. But it's got some great ensemble work in here, and it is the numbers that you know and love. It's all that jazz. It's nowadays. It's um, razzle dazzle. It is um, some of Kander and Ebb's most lasting work. I think it's got a weak finish. For me, I, this, I always thought this, this is, as I said, for me as well, it's my third time seeing it. And we've got these great big numbers that are fantastic. And it comes to the two at the end with their big vaudeville cabaret show. And I'm just like, oh, is, is that it? Is the that hot honey rag left you on? cold. It left you more like a wet rag. Yeah, and that's the thing. And I almost want it to be some big thing that builds. And I'm like, yes, whoa, okay, I see that. This is why they belong together. And for me, that's why it's a three, I think, because there's some fantastic stuff, but a lot of great style, great sound, pumping stuff. But, but that's just what we but that's think. It is. That's just what, what you think. think. Anything what, you do? What you think? Anything? No, it's what I think. Just what I think. What do you think? think? That's more important. Come and see the show. Theatre is back on its feet. Don't let it down now, guys. No. We're just building traction. You need to come to the theatre. Yes. Um, you need to live your life in the moment. Take your own precautions. Mask up if it makes you feel better. Absolutely. We, would, we did, and we highly encourage, encourage you to. Absolutely. But come to the theatre, guys, because don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you got till it's gone? Covid has taught us one thing, anything can be taken away. I thought you were going to say Life that Simon can't living. sing. <laughs> so that's what we think. Let us know, comment below. We are the Break Leggers. And the Little Leggers. And the Little Leggers and we'll catch you again soon. Bye! Bye.